Welcome to San Carlos Cathedral as we began our Lenten journey today with the celebration of Ash Wednesday. Thanks for joining our community online to worship today. We're pleased to have Bishop Ryan as our presider. Our music is significantly changing to reflect our more somber and reflective season of Lent. We are setting aside the glory to God and our joyous Alleluia. Our Eucharistic Mass parts are changing to the Mass of Creation, and we will sing the ancient Latin chant, Agnus Dei, for the Lamb of God. Please sing these with energy at home as we prepare ourselves over the next weeks for Jesus' death and resurrection. Our gathering song is Gracious God. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you all. Welcome as we celebrate this Ash Wednesday, the beginning, of course, of our Lenten time of preparation for the Feast of Easter. Welcome to all of you this morning. Again, we keep in mind those who are suffering so much from the pandemic, for those who have succumbed to the pandemic, the families that are left, you know, with the loss of dear ones, and put our trust in the presence of Christ in our lives, and especially during this season of Lent. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people and make not your heritage a reproach. 
with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among their peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we, 
might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before yourself as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they've already received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that what your almsgiving may be is kept a secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, Do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your inner room, close the door and pray to your father in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you fast, Do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, We begin Lent. That wonderful time is here. It's a unique time. It's definitely a time in which the church, the body of Christ, comes together in a special way for the celebration of Easter, the greatest feast of the year. And we remember all of our approaches to this time the sacrifices that we're sometimes accustomed to choose, the penances adopted, the steps taken, maybe even sometimes grudgingly, but eventually reaching the sacred times 
of Easter. Maybe a bit somber at times, to be sure, but always following through the liturgical life of the church at this moment, we reach our glorious celebration of Easter, the feast of the risen Christ. Hallelujah! But I don't think we have done Lent in quite some time, if ever, in a time quite like the pandemic. It covers us like a veil, somber and challenging and frustrating, even frightening. You can each fill in the details of how you yourselves are going through what this year presents to us and challenges us. And now, of course, covers our Lenten journey. We understand that Lent seeks to reflect on the sufferings of Christ. It's a practice we share together so as not to receive the grace of God in vain, which we heard in our second reading today. But these are not ordinary times. We're dealing with sacrifices that wrap themselves around us on a daily basis. They require a prayerful penance and, and endurance each day. We cannot run away from it. I spoke just a couple of days ago with cousins, first cousins in Minneapolis where it was 17 below. They're my age. They're older, actually, a couple of years. They haven't left their home since this particular pandemic began. They have a granddaughter from California who is going to the University of Minnesota. And she buys all their groceries for them. But they never leave the house. That's a penance. That's a sacrifice. And as we know from our own personal experiences, it can get closed in. It can be difficult. It can be, it can be a time of impatience or uh, a lack of, uh, of kindness or a forgetfulness of sensitivities. So we're challenged. Now I know that fasting is a, an acceptable way of going through the season of Lent, but what do we fast from? You think of food. But I think that maybe in these circumstances, if we choose the effort to strive for patience, kindness, understanding, caring and attention in whatever ways we can for one another. Whatever, whatever are the usual connections and circumstances in which we live. And that includes our failures, the struggle to to live in this confining way that can so often challenge us. So if we decided that we want to make that our sacrifice during this particular season, to push through it all, Identify with the unfolding of the scriptures and the sacramental life with our sisters and brothers. To enter into prayer, into the passion and death of our Savior in the very manner that our Lenten tradition presents. To accept it as our fasting. 
even if it's not one that we would have preferred, would that not be a way of completing our time during Easter? The Easter in which we say he's risen? I'm just making this as a suggestion because actually I can be easily convinced that those of you who are listening to me this morning, seeing me this morning, are already doing what I'm suggesting. Real penance, if you will, prayerful penance, being kind, gracious, forgiving, long-suffering, it's a journey. That's a journey. It's a fasting. It's a very significant fasting. And it's a suggestion I'm just sharing with you. And a journey that I'm willing to take with you. You know, this fasting doesn't have to be something grand. just kindly and enduring. And so this morning, that's just something I'm sharing with you, both in the saying and in the doing with you. God bless you. We will now bless the ashes. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God the Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes. O oh God, who was moved by the acts of humility, respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers, and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who will be marked with these ashes. And that as they follow the Lenten observances, that they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of the Father who sees our hearts, we pray. Have Lord, mercy, God, in your kindness. Lord, hear our prayer. For a church rich in righteousness and abundant in mercy, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a community of religion, eager for integrity and willing to seek peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For a nation and a world hungry for justice and quick to charity, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a people brokenhearted for those who suffer and moved by compassion to care, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a society longing to serve the sick and ready to meet the needs of the vulnerable, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today, we pray especially for the intentions of Nino Palma, for Vincent Torrente, for Santa Geigo, for Marshall McMillan, for Horace Paul Flores, for the intentions of Paul Adrian, for my friends Mary and Tom. For these, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a communion of saints flung open to all who seek God's forgiveness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving Lord, we ask you to receive these intentions and all of the personal intentions of all of you who are celebrating this morning at this Mass. That God will look graciously down upon us in our needs, that God will be present to us as we make this journey, and that in this journey, his forgiveness and kindness 
and grace and strength will, can, will remain with us, especially for those who have most need of his mercy and presence. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray as we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent. We entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and be cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us to imitate you in your kindness as we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to his name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of, our, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is, my, this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come <coughs> again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family, whom you've summoned before in your compassion, O oh, merciful God. Gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, to all our praising you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us exchange a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lord. Create in me. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who desire not the death of sinners, but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased. And to grant to us all the grace that we need for this steadfast observance of Lent, and give pardon for our sins and newness of life after the right likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just very quickly, the new schedule. Saturday vigil, 4 o'clock inside the cathedral. 6 o'clock bilingual inside the cathedral. Sunday, 7.30 inside the cathedral. 9 o'clock outside, weather permitting. 12 o'clock noon, San Carlos um, courtyard outside. And then, of course, from 10.30 to 11 o'clock, the distribution of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in one another. Thanks be to God. Ashes. <laughs> Rise again from ashes, from the good.